Hey guys, good evening. So tonight we're going to be using all sorts of different pearlescent and opaque watercolors to paint a betta fish. You guys should be able to see the reference to the betta fish on the screen right now. That's the one I'm going to be using. I also included a link down in the description if you, you know, you want to embiggen it. Um, I'm going to be working from a larger reference because my eyesight is terrible and that's just not quite large enough for me. Um, this was requested by Indie Kitty, so thank you Indie Kitty. And the other request was to draw a cat girl and then someone kind of rolled on that and requested a cat girl and a bunny girl. And I really liked that idea, I thought it was really cute. So I want to show you guys what I'm going to do with that and then we can go ahead and get started with today's main event. Okay, so I misunderstood a request uh, from Joseph asking me to pause the stream, so I paused it in OBS because I thought maybe we had a real problem. Uh, but no, he was just reminding me to do what I'm always supposed to be doing when I'm streaming and pausing the stream so we don't get a feedback loop. But it may have dropped or it may have gotten weird, so I need you guys to let me know. And I asked it in the chat, but I, I have no idea what's going through because I paused it. I need y'all to let me know if it dropped or if it resumed. Aha! Okay, so Calvin commented on, um, hope, hopefully that means the stream's working. Uh, so, um, what I want to do, but I'm not going to do it necessarily during a stream because this is something that I see taking a longer time. So I may do some of it as like a time lapse video and then I may do some of it as a stream, but I really did like the idea. I thought it was really cute. So um, it's like the combination of a cat and a bunny girl. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cute if they were friends? And that's really dorky. Um, so I have a few different iterations on that idea that I like, and I want to kind of develop them a little bit more. Um, and then check back in with you guys when I have them. So I really did like that idea. I just need more room to kind of develop it. So um, hopefully I can check in with you guys on that one. And then there was something else. I mean, there's a lot of something else. I keep a doc of like stream ideas and that's, um, and then I also ask you guys for ideas. But I was also thinking about doing some of my favorite villagers in like a Japanese idol style band. So like Phoebe Bangle and Wendy, since two of them are always talking about being internet celebrities and then Phoebe's the only one who knows how to play an instrument. So I figured she'd be the leader. So I thought that could be like a, um, a cute watercolor or maybe a cute alcohol marker stream in the future too. So those are just some ideas that are kind of ruminating, kind of going on in the background. But for today, we're going to be painting a beautiful betta fish. I went for one that would look really good on black paper. So we have one with a lot of white and with some red and some iridescent blue. So um, what I have right now in front of me, and I may have to go dig for a red, but maybe not. We'll see. Is I have the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press. This is the black paper. I did a kitchen sink review on this and tried a bunch of different products on it. So this is going to be what we're going to be using today. It is a cotton rag paper. It has been dyed, but um, during testing, I did not find any reworking problems, any lifting problems, any reactivation of the black dye. So I'm hoping this is going to work really well for our purposes. I have a yellow lead pencil. We could use a, um, we probably could use a graphite pencil. This is going to show up a little bit better. My eyesight's not so great. 
we have the Hydracolor. So these are handmade watercolors. And I linked reviews to all of the things that I reviewed in case any of you guys are curious about these things. We have several different fine text sets because like a magpie or a crow, I hoard beautiful shiny things. And we also have a tube of white gouache, but I'm kind of hoping we can do most of our white with like a pearlescent white watercolor. Okay. I can do that. Pop it out. Pop, pop, pop. I'm all about the idea of like Love Live Animal Crossing Edition. That seems really cute. Oh, oh, you mean in the, the the cat and the bunny girl having tea together image? It's cupcakes. It could be whatever though. It's just like um, a shorthand reminder to me, like draw cute food here. Hey, Nisa. Good evening. So I'm just kind of getting myself organized. I hope you guys have had a good week. Hopefully, everybody's still healthy. Hopefully, um, if you're not healthy, you're in a position where you can rest and you can recover and you can get the help you might need. Things have been okay over here, a little bit boring. I mean, boring is better than like super dramatic, terrible things happening. I think I mentioned last week that I've been reading a lot of manga. I've been reading a lot more manga this week. Um, let's see, what did I start? I started Complex Age, which is really good. Um, it's about a 26 year old cosplayer and she's kind of like right on that cusp of like, am I too old for this? And um, I used to cosplay and I quit partially because I was getting old, but I quit mostly because it was getting to be it's just very different and it was more about being a beauty pageant and being a certain size and having certain looks than it was about the skill you were putting into your costume and I didn't like that. Um, and also the friend that I, that I was cosplay partners with, she wanted to go pro and I wanted to go to grad school and be a comic artist so it was kind of one of those situations where you know you can't, you don't have enough time to do both. Both require so much dedication. Just trying to get myself situated even though we have nothing drawn yet and um, also we kind of just had I am so into that idea <laughs> um, we also just kind of had a falling out too so it's a good time to not be cosplaying for me anymore so for our beta fish on black paper, I'm really excited because I haven't had a whole lot of opportunity to do watercolor on black paper. So I'm gonna try to sketch as lightly as I can get away with, which may mean it doesn't show up super well for you guys. See, what I wanna do is I wanna give myself lots of room for that tail. Let's see if this causes problems. A little bit, yeah. Okay, so actually what I'm gonna do, and I don't recommend necessarily y'all do this, I'm going to scrap this one. Normally I wouldn't do that, but um, I think I degraded the paper surface, so we wanna be careful with this. And this is kind of why I didn't, I was, I've been afraid to sketch on it. I'm gonna cut it and use it for something else. So it's not gonna go completely to waste. And I'm just gonna have to live with what I'm doing. So I don't get to draw a lot of fish. I draw a lot of mermaids, but I don't necessarily draw a lot of fish. But when I was in high school, I had two beta fish, so I'm fairly fond of them. And it's nice to draw something just a little bit 
different from what I normally draw. Okay, so I told you guys I started reading Complex Age. I highly recommend it. Um, I'm also reading one of Robico's new manga. I say new, but everything the U.S. gets is like five years out of date. Our Pre Precious Conversations. I really liked My Little Monster. I don't like the title. Like the titles of these are not great, but the her art or Robico's art is so good, and the jokes really hit well. I know. I don't even have um, too many pictures of when I was into cosplay because that was a time period kind of before smartphones. But I'll see if I have a few. I'll see if I can dig them up. We did a lot of Naruto cosplay, which tells y'all this was a while back. And we also did Rosin Maiden cosplay. And my partner and I would do uh, Susaseki and Sosaseki, so uh, Boku and Desu, so the 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 green and blue girl. Okay, so I have my fish base kind of sketched. I'm just going to kind of tighten some of my details. Since we can't erase, I don't want to put down too many construction lines. Yes, it's also known as a fighting fish. They're a popular pet in the US, but often they're too accessible. Like places like Walmart will sell them in these terrible little containers and it's not a good life for those fish. It's like a little takeout container and they'll just leave them in those containers for like a week and the water gets real nasty. Okay, so I'm just doing kind of a scalloped edge like we see on the fish. I gesture like y'all are looking like, okay, let me orient myself. Joseph, is the fish to my right hand? Uh, no, the fish would be to your left hand. Okay. It's kind of on your face. <sighs> so my gestures mean nothing to you. What else am I reading? I should be reading Kaiju Max. You know, I'm gonna admit something that is really not a good thing to admit. I have, I used to love American kid lit comics, American middle grade comics. Um, I ardently support many of those creators. I've spent a lot of money on kid lit comics over the years because it's a genre I sincerely believe in. Um, but it's gotten very difficult for me to read because it's emotionally very difficult for me to read um, because that's what I also want to do and that's what 7 Inch Kara is. So there's a lot of like pain attached to reading those kinds of comics. It is mature, but I'm talking, sure. I guess I'm thinking about, um, <sighs> there's another monster one that, um, I should have read that you highly recommended, um, and it's more like all ages or middle grade. I am, style, but, but I know Kaiju Max is not for kids. No, not at all. So I know I'm not actually, my brain isn't actually thinking of Kaiju Max. I'm thinking of something else. I read both volumes of Over the Wall and I really liked it. So that's not the one I'm thinking of. It's like, whatever, it's like about friendly monsters. I won't remember till after the stream, so I don't know why I'm trying. <laughs> How's the fish showing up for you guys? Can you, can you see what I'm doing with the yellow lead? It's visible for sure. Okay. What I want to do with the cat and the bunny girl is I want to turn it into like a printable line art. That's part of the reason I decided not to do it live live.
is all Susasaki for me. She's such a brat. So, of course, I had to cosplay her. For context, I also used to cosplay Eno from Naruto, so I have a type. So I'm not drawing any of the fins right now because we can't erase and I want to make sure or our erasing is very limited. I want to keep it as light as possible so I'm not adding as much detail as I might normally add in a sketch because I'm going to try to do it mostly through just painting it. I also have like a lot of iridescence. I know I have a really old, small fine tech kit that has a lot of iridescence. There we go. And I'm gonna want a red, it's like a vermilion red. I have a DS palette here that's a little opaque. So we'll, I think that'll work. So, as I have been doing, I'm sure this is everyone's favorite part, but I've been dual recording these, as I have mentioned before, um, and part of the reason I'm doing that is because I can time lapse it, and that allows me to share a shorter version that people might actually watch after the fact, because these live streams don't really have a lot of after the stream views. We had one that has had hundreds of views after. Which one is that? The alcohol marker one? I don't remember. It was kind of random. I don't know why it blew up. Maybe someone shared it? Maybe. That's, like we dug into the analytics and I can't remember. That's the power of sharing people's stuff. Okay. Huh? Is it? <laughs> oh, yes. Always hint hint. Okay, so full disclosure, I'm sure I mentioned this earlier, but I want to mention again. Um, I am new to kind of negative painting in this regard or reverse painting or whatever you want to call it. So there's a high probability that um, there will be some goofs and we may have to do it again. So let's just think of this as like an exploratory exercise. So what I'm going to try to start with is white gouache and then our more opaque kind of vermilion-y color. And maybe I shouldn't have picked such a white fish. try to get some of my colors going ahead of time. Because I have a feeling once I start painting it, what I'm gonna wanna do is going to move kinda. Color pencil would work way better for this. Um, and you wouldn't have to use this paper. You could use the, um, Oh my gosh, Strathmore makes a, a nice black mixed media paper that works really well with Posca. Like I wanna do some poison dart tree frogs on Posca, or with Posca. Okay, so these are the hydrocolor. I'm gonna let them just kinda of activate and wake up. easier to pop out the colors I need. Also, want to warn you guys, it's raining tonight. 
so our dry times might be off the hook. I'd heard about the noir paper. How do you like it, B? I didn't try it though because the price was kind of prohibitive. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Let's try starting with our gouache. It's been watered down a little bit past like cream consistency. And what I'm kind of aiming for is gonna be some wet into wet. So I'm really hoping the rain outside is going to work in my favor. get to see me be super gross with my brush. See, people think I'm rude when I don't want to loan them like certain art supplies. It's because I put them in my mouth. You do not want to borrow my pencil. I promise. Yeah, I just hold because I'm dual wielding. So I'm, I hold one of the brushes in my mouth sometimes while I'm painting. I do that sometimes too. I really admire that because it works really well. Um, I do that with smaller brushes, but sometimes I have like arthritis problems with larger brushes, so it doesn't work as well for me. I do, I do. Oh, this is not gonna be as opaque as I want. It dried real quick, which is kind of surprising because it's raining outside and sometimes the humidity just really makes dry times impossible for me. It's also interesting how the gouache kind of acts almost like a watercolor ground and draws watercolor up into it. You know, if you mention it, people are going to want to see it in action. You may just be signing me up for a review. Hmm, I have a feeling I'm going to hate this. I'm going to hate it so much. That's okay. Um, I'll make it work. I'll get to the point where I like it. Ah, oh, thank you. Working on it, getting it figured out. Kind of laying in some blue. Cause you see how on the fish it has like this iridescence to it. I thought if we maybe, because I do want to use iridescent paint on it after it's had a chance to dry, but I thought while well, we're just kind of setting our initial colors and blocking it in. Four brushes now. In your mouth? Uh, none in my mouth. 
four in one hand. We may end up getting that brush holster after all. Well, there's many brush holsters. I only saw one brush arm holster. And I apologize for being kind of quiet. Um, that tends to happen when I'm thinking as I'm painting. You're in awe of the fish. Oh, for sure. You got me. I really wanted to do a test for this this week and I just ran out of time because I think um, if I'd had time to do a test I would have hit a stride pretty quickly and then we could have just like gone straight in with that. share what I'm learning right that counts okay so being way more reliant on my brush than I wanted to be up there I was being a little too persnickety and too too cautious but allowing the brush to do a lot of the work adds an immediate immediacy which this desperately needs because it's gonna not work as well unless there's a certain amount of like spontaneity It'll be interesting to see. Oh yeah, the hanging ones. Or do you mean, I have one like this. I fear if I actually have it out and use it, I still won't be fast enough with it. Those are really nice though. See, I wish I'd let the brush do all the work up there. I appreciate y'all being with me tonight, hanging out like this. Even if tonight is more of like a trial by error kind of night, I still appreciate getting to hang out. The table ones are nice. They're very handy. Ooh, made a mess there, but that's okay. All right, so I have a base. I am actually somewhat happy with the base. Let me see what's going on with my other recording equipment, please. <sighs> Just do the thing. The thing for which you were designed to do. Oh yeah. The secondary recording thing gave up. Give me a sec. We got dry time anyway. I was trying to be frugal about my battery, but it's not going to let me do that. 
Oh, because then I got to edit it. Okay, now I got it. Okay, so what I want to do, yes, exactly. But what's kind of cool about that is it's going to allow us to build up these layers of opacity. And then we can go back in with the red as well, which is kind of what I was hoping to do. But I wasn't sure how well it would work with what I'm using. I think if I was using like Chinese watercolors, it would work a lot better because those are designed to be opaque. Instead, I'm using white gouache and Daniel Smith, which is mm, semi-opaque sometimes. So I'm going to try to go in again, being aware that some of these areas are still wet and hopefully using that to my advantage, like this fin up here. It's kind of a shame though, that we lose our opacity. Also what I'm kind of thinking with this red is add in some white and then paint on it or paint over it. And that'll kind of give us some of that opacity again. I'm hoping. Theoretically. Going to try and be a lot looser with the brush strokes. Yeah, well, so in the kitchen sink review, I tried a bunch of the Gansai paints on it. And some of them are really great. The ones that have um, a lot of white in them, like some of the greens and some of the blues, but not all of them are as opaque as I would like. And not really enough of them are as opaque as I would like. Otherwise those would probably work really well. I'm gonna stand for this eye. Apologize because I know it's going to do funny things with the camera, but I just can't see what I'm doing up here. I want to paint back over that in red a little bit later and then around his eye he's got like these golden eyes so what I want to do is I want to kind of go in where there's going to be the highlights don't I wear I'm supposed to wear glasses but I have not had my prescription refilled in 10 years so I mean frankly the angle would be a little too oblique for my brain to process well so sometimes it's important to stand up and get a better angle on things so you can see them a little bit more clearly like when we're drawing on a flat surface like this um, our brain kind of distorts what we're seeing. So it's important to kind of get back up and look at it from another viewpoint. Like yeah, you know, get a fresh perspective on things is probably just perennial good advice. Another favorite is take a break and walk away and come back to it later, which we can't do during streams, but is generally healthy, good life advice. Why don't you talk about the beta fit you have? Um, so in high school, I had a couple of beta fish. Well, it's high school, college. I had a couple of beta fish. Um, 
part of the reason I rant about the fact that Walmart sells betta fish is because both of mine came from there. Um, and even as a kid, I was kind of a sucker. So I saw how deplorable their, the conditions they were in. And I decided I was going to buy one, which is usually counter to any advice I give people. I generally don't advise people to go out of their way to adapt, adopt animals that are sick because it costs a lot of money and many of us don't necessarily have the funds for that and you may just be happier from the get-go adopting a pet that doesn't necessarily have as many pre-existing conditions. But even knowing that in high school I bought a, basically a clearance section beta fish. He was a little red beta his fins had really bad fin rot. He just looked like he was on death's door. And I kind of figured, um, I'd kept newts for years and I'd kept little black mollies for a while and I'd kept um, axolotls. So I had kept aquatic pets. I wasn't a big fish person, but I liked him well enough. And I mean, this was the kind of pet I could keep in my bedroom. He wouldn't really cause any problems. So, and I also had already had the tank I don't even remember why I had the tank. I think I had a friend who'd had a beta and their beta died and she gave me the tank because I used to keep newts and I think she thought I could probably use them and talking about these things and painting, I ended up making a gross looking mess. Um, that's okay. Brain does not talk and draw. We know that. Um, anyway, so I already had the tank. So I kind of figured, cause like, I don't know, for those of you who live in the US and you have Walmarts around, and you've seen this, you know how cheap they sell those betas for. They're selling them for like $5, $6, right? Well, this one was like a $2 beta fish who was probably going to die. And I figured I could at least like give him an okay life for whatever life he had left. So he wouldn't have to live in a takeout container, like a little plastic takeout container for the rest of his life. I'm trying to give that fish a beta life. A beta, <laughs> a beta life. So... Um, I had a bunch of like fin rot stuff from the other fish that I'd taken care of and newts can get some of those diseases as well. So I had that kind of medication already on hand. So um, I went ahead and I bought him, took him home and he lived for five years. Like that's pretty good for a betta fish when I didn't think he was going to live a week. Uh, the second betta fish Ronin. In fact, I named him Sushi because I figured he was going to die, which is 17-year-old back humor. Not the greatest. Uh, Ronin was a similarly sad betta fish. I think he was also, wait, no. Sushi was blue and black. Ronin was all red. Neither of them were beautiful showy fish. Like, their fins had been all rotten off and chewed up looking, and they just looked like sad fish. And when I opened the container that they came in, the water just smelled really nasty. That's for the best, B. Yeah, I haven't been in a Walmart that has a fish, se fish section in a while. But I thought it might be like the fabric section where um, some Walmarts have it and some Walmarts don't. And it's kind of dependent on the demand. Anyway, Ronan lived about two years, which isn't a bad life. And unfortunately, what killed Ronan off, I think Sushi just died of old age, but what killed Ronan off was I was in college and I was paying my younger brother to look after him and to turn the light on for a little while and just kind of, you know, keep an eye on my fish. And my brother forgot to turn off the light and he, poor thing, he basically like was cooked. I would have brought him to live with me, but my dorms didn't even allow us to keep fish. I mean, people snuck them in, but I had a TA who didn't like me one bit, so I wasn't about to tempt fate. I love these fins, and then it's like his interior body. I'm like, what is, what am I doing with this? Why, why did I make these life choices? That's okay. You know what? That's what art is about. That is what this is about about goofing and making mistakes and being like, oh, that's terrible. And then being like, can I salvage it and learning from it? <laughs> Walmart does not sell fresh fish. I kind of wish they did because we'd be getting better quality. Oh, 
That would have been a better move on their part. At least they would have been being honest about what they were doing. In fact, they used to sell newts and other like aquatic reptiles. You could buy like little turtles. You could buy African clawed frogs, which n n do not take any of me saying these things as like an endorsement of like Walmart doing that because most of them ended up dead and most of the water was always disgusting. Oh man, here I go. Goofing it more. I'm sorry, fish. Maybe I can salvage it after it dries. It's going to take a while to dry now. I have never had a rabbit now. Um, there was one when I was in college. There was one at the local pets. There's actually two rabbits that I would have adopted. I'm not a rabbit person, but there were two rabbits I would have adopted. There was one at the local pet store. She was really small, but she was really sweet. And I used to go once a week to buy like amphibian food and to buy bird food. And she would always, I'd like always go visit with her and she'd always hop over and like kind of nuzzle my hand. So I liked her. And then there was another one at a different pet store I would frequent. And he was like this huge orange rabbit. And he was just real chill and real friendly. And he was just like a big rabbit. So those were like the two rabbits I would have been like, yeah, I'm going to adopt a rabbit. No, that is true, Calvin. They don't, they don't get paid enough. They don't hire enough of them to actually do it because Walmart intentionally understaffs and they don't get paid enough. And they're probably not trained on how to do that anyway. So that would require hiring someone who has that skill set. And skill sets make you expensive, which makes you hire, harder to hire. I have had four cat, no, well, should I count Haffy and Raccoon? Six cats, um, not all at the same time. Oh, I'm over the span of my childhood. My parents had a dog when I was little, um, but she died when I was like eight. She was old when they had me, when they gave birth to me, so. Um, I've had so many pet newts. I've had several axolotls. I've had loads of fish. I've had the two beta fish. I had a parakeet. And I share, technically share a lovebird with my mom, but I live in Tennessee and my mom lives in Louisiana, so it's basically her bird. Yeah, this is uh, the Stonehenge Aqua, so it's a cotton rag. And I'm just kind of waiting for it to dry. You can see, pardon. You can see it's shiny and it's raining outside, so there's nowhere for the liquid to evaporate into. Ah, no problem. So I'm just kind of killing time, waiting for watercolor to dry. Because what I want to do is I want to add... It's not a fresh water paper. It's fresh watercolor paper. It's a fresh water fish. Actually, these guys are really neat. Um, they do like living in uh, tanks that have circulation, but you don't have to, obviously. And it's because they can actually go up to the surface and gulp oxygen and deal with it that way. So these fish are really cool because they can live. It doesn't mean they ought to, but they can live in like really stagnant, 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 shallow uh, pools of water that don't have a lot of resources. Yeah, they do like brackish water. You're right. They would be perfect for Walmart. Poor. That's the only reason why they do so well at Walmart. Y'all are literally watching paint dry, and I apologize for that. Um, I do have, I do have a hair dryer, and I normally don't recommend using it. But you know what? We've already goofed. Like we might as well go full goofatron. It's going to take me a minute to dig it up. And then find a place to plug it in. The dryer is in the bottle. Where is it? Not near the top. Look, look at the disaster. I've actually gotten rid of all the black. Gotten rid of all the what? Uh, the border around the fish. I, I got a 
to find somewhere to plug this in. Is there a better place? From above the desk? What? The tentacle is above the desk. <sighs> I don't know. I kill cactuses by accident, too. I overlove them. Oh, this is, a, this is, this is trouble. Okay, the noise is going to be terrible. Why don't you just mute it? I'm going to. Oh, it wants to be funny. And not in a good way. There we go. Okay. All right. That is true, Calvin. We got an ugly stage we're getting through here. Okay. I'm going to mute the mic while I use the hairdryer to spare y'all that terrible sound. I muted the mic, mic ox, but I see, oh, the lavalier, okay. Okay, that is mm, more dry at least. Not not perfect, but it's better dry than what it was. Hey, good evening, BJ Andrews. I'm chewing it because it helps with the headaches that I get from talking for three hours. I know, I know it's gross. The popping, I know. That's why I've joked that it's like bad ASMR. It's popping. It's like watching someone chew. I understand that it's gross, but I used to get really bad headaches after streams. Yeah, yeah not only does it, it can weaken the masking tape, it can affect the pigments, it can push them around. I don't generally use a hair dryer. Okay. Where are we now? And boy, now it's like really pouring outside. So I guess we're going to be using the hair dryer a lot this evening. Oh, snap. Restarting the secondary recording divicular. Okay, so hopefully 
what we're going to achieve here is a more saturated, more opaque red. You know, I've asked in the past if dehumidifiers are actually beneficial for watercolor artists. Um, I was at a workshop and the guy teaching the workshop was a fellow Louisianian and he wouldn't give me a straight answer one way or the other. Wait, like he wouldn't even say whether he used them in his studio or he didn't use them in his studio and he kind of treated it like it was a really stupid question. <laughs> I was just kind of like, okay. I don't think it's a stupid question, but. So I'm kind of treating this first layer as like our base layer. And I'm hoping I can kind of build up some opacity. Earlier on, Calvin uh, mentioned, suggested kind of treating it like I would acrylic. And I am not super good at acrylic, so. That's okay. It's probably an excellent suggestion, just one I cannot take because it is not a medium I'm particularly adept in. Oh, it is definitely pretty human. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mean in general? It could be. Um, so my mom lives in Louisiana and she runs a I want to say three quart humidifier upstairs and every day it's got three full quarts. Yeah, I don't think he knew either. And he, instead of just being like, I don't know, why don't you try it and report back? He just kind of blew it off. Like, why would you ask that? Shows how little experience you have. And it's like, that's why I'm taking your workshop. That's kind of interesting what we were able to get on some of this, even though this is probably not going to turn into one of those pieces that I am just so proud of. I'm glad we did it. I'm glad I did something new and that I'm not comfortable with. And also, like, maybe the next time I do it, I'll be stronger for it. You know what I mean? I have a real bad tendency to kind of spam stuff I know I am decent at rather than risking taking, you know, making a mistake or it not looking very good. Um, I think a lot of artists, especially people who do it semi-commercially or they do it freelance, uh, kind of get it into their heads that if we're not doing something that we could sell or is, you know, pretty, then it's not good enough and it's not viable. And then we kind of lose that sense of play which really pushes us to be able to make improvements. <laughs> oh man, it's teachers like that who make people not want to take art classes too. I'm here to learn. It was one of the, the, one of the people who do the watercolor classes for hands-on creativity here in Nashville. However, he's been the only one who I felt was kind of dismissive. The other ones have been really, really nice. Okay, I kind of like, I kind of like where we're going with this. What type of paint am I using? For right now, I am just using some ba -ba 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 white gouache. So it's an opaque watercolor medium. I'm also using the Daniel Smith half pant palette with like, they're kind of, I don't know if this is on camera. They're kind of vermilion red. And the only reason I went with that is because it's semi-opaque. Um, a Chinese watercolor that's semi-opaque would work well. Calvin earlier suggested maybe the Gensai watercolor. Excuse me, those would probably work well. Any watercolor or gouache that's somewhat opaque would probably work in this situation. And then later, once we have these colors kind of established, I want to go in with the metallics. Um, it would have been really pretty to just do, I'm just checking my, my thing. Let me pause it. 
um, it would have been really pretty to just do metallics. And this might be something when I'm a little more confident in that I revisit because with the metallics, I feel like they are best served going in and like doing what you're going to do and then being done with it. Whereas I wanted to give myself more room to kind of finesse it, which may not have worked in my favor. On that note, so the body here, what I was going for was kind of setting the stage for iridescence, but I was a little too heavy handed with it and it moved a little too much. So I'm gonna go back in with the white gouache and kind of push that back a little bit. That's right, Indy, you don't get better without trying or you just always draw the exact same thing and like you're the, you're the best at drawing that one thing. And I get accused of being a one trick pony enough so I want to try and do some different things. And I think you should write that story. I look forward to seeing the illustrations you come up with it. Come up for it, sorry. Come up with for it. There we go. That's the correct syntax. I do like some of the some of the blending, so I don't want to cover all of it because some of it's kind of neat. Hey Joseph, can you do me a favor? I want to be able to keep up with Tanner's story but it's hard for me to do both. Would you read it out loud to me, please? Sure. Thank you. The MTSU story. Yeah, I know. Okay. Finding the beginning. And just read it. Uh, I got sick with the flu and missed art class for a week. When I was gone, Mr. D changed the defect to a multi-week assignment, a major multi-week assignment. We started discussing the project and the changes made me question if he was talking about the project I knew or something new. So mm -hmm. I asked, in his opinion, a stupid question to confirm. He got pissed and jumped out of his chair and said, if anyone asks me one more question about this project, I'm going to take my pistol, walk out into the woods, and I'll never come back. Wow, that's a lot to lay on a bunch of cops. It's like super inappropriate, but it's also so. like, that's on him. And it's also like, I wonder how poorly this, this assignment was explained that everyone has asked so many questions that he can't deal with it. That's a, that's a, that's a lot to uh, unpack there. And as Tanner said, he left for the day. I asked if his professor was implying he was going to suicide. He said, yeah, for sure. And the school made him apologize for that. Yeah, that's like a lot. That's, yeah, I can't imagine how I would have reacted to that. That's a lot. Hmm. Do you mean like visually 3D indie or do you mean you want to bring in like a 3D element? Because that would be pretty cool. I mean, both are pretty cool, but you get, you get what I'm saying. That would be really cool. Yeah, that's, that is a lot. I think as the kids call it now, that is yikes. You mean awkward? No, it's, no, yikes. Like, that's, man, like, what do you even, that's like, this, that's messed up on so many levels. Also, because it's just kind of disrespectful, too, to any of the students who may be going through that themselves, to treat it like it's a joke. But it may also be like, a cry for help like it's just it's just bad news on so many levels okay i actually i'm actually kind of starting to like it so what i'm gonna do 
is I'm going to let it dry. So I think I'm going to pull out the hair dryer, give it the old wingle jangle hair dryer with the mute on. Then I'll clean up my workspace so that we can work with the promised metallic watercolors. I feel real bad because I was like, we're going to be doing metallic watercolor today. And then I was like, ha, 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 ha. Although maybe I will like go back and do another metallic and make good on my word and maybe try to do something a little looser and we can call this one the practice one. All the fake are the metallics. That's what, they're fairly opaque, but they're not necessarily, I don't know. I should have picked, I'll do a different fish if I do the metallics, because then I can play with the black of the paper more. Because my mistake with this fish, this fish is gorgeous. I was distracted by like the striking white on a black background and the iridescence, but it doesn't lend itself well to like that play of white and black on a single animal. Well, if y'all just love hair dryer sounds, then I guess I won't mute it. I hope, I don't know if that was sarcasm. I will, however, move the thing out of the way. So the other problem with the hair dryer is that usually when we're testing to see if a watercolor is still wet, I'll put the back of my hand on it and see if it's cool to the touch. But the hair dryer warms the paper. Actually though, I think it is doing a pretty good job cooling it, or not cooling it, drying it. So I am appreciative of that. Let me make sure the camera is, oof. Actually, you know what? Like, it's really growing on me. It's not photorealistic, but this is the first time I've done this. I should sit so you guys don't have to look at my midsection. Um, it's the first time I've done it. So like, considering I've never done it before, it is not bad. And it also builds confidence for doing the metallic version too. So this is like a test run. Our milk. have a nice lively chat tonight which I want to just take a moment to say how much I appreciate that because it's so much easier than me just rambling at y'all you laughed at that yeah yeah Tanner in the chat always means good conversations oh that's not what I want I do not want my main page I want Disson I want Datton I mean not have my midsection all over the... You want me to change the title or leave it? You can leave it because I'm gonna do a, um, a follow-up when I finish this one, all metallic. Like Tanner's like the sweetest, most laid back person. I can't imagine. I think if, I think the dude did a real poor job explaining the project, changed the scope of the project, thus confusing everyone. There's, and does it? There's two stories from the same day of professors being inappropriate. Yeah. No. Well, weird is a good thing. Weird is interesting. Twice. 
wow, wow, you got two apologies. Was it in one day? Was it like back to back apologies? Like, and when you're done with him, come on over to my office. I have something I need to say. Okay, I am going to switch now to the metallic paints. And then, like I mentioned earlier, I think I want to try doing one all metallic now that like I'm more confident, I'm more comfortable with it. On the note of art teachers saying you have no talent, I feel that on like a soul level. I have had a several art teachers who told me that I should just give up and that I'm just wasting my time and that um yeah we can talk about I'm not ashamed to talk about it but I also don't want to like derail so I'm using this is some fine tech it's like the pearly silver and it's actually way more opaque since I I um activated it so it gives me a lot of hope I was thinking I'd have to do like an underpainting and then use the um fine text to add some silvery sheen but honestly it's opaque enough that I probably could do the whole thing or you know you know what I mean I don't I don't know that the whole I think that might be a little much but if we did like some metallic and then some matte that could really look nice Oh, thank you. Yeah, Joseph's right. I do streams every, oh, you can't hear me. Uh, would you transcribe that, please? Would you say, would you type thank you and uh, reiterate that I do it every Saturday night? And they are always welcome to come hang out with us. And I particularly appreciate it because I really thought this fish was gonna be like a disaster, but I am happy it's not. I'm happy to be wrong. Such much. So when I, I've been wanting to be, I have wanted to be a comic artist since I was 13. Um, I've talked about that like a million times, but I, do, I wanted to put that out there. Like I wanted, I've wanted to be a comic artist since I was 13. I grew up in rural Louisiana, very rural. Things were very different back then, um, not for the better. Our library did not have any comics. I think they might've had Calvin and Hobbes. I'm, I'm being generous. I think they might have, but my brother and I both love Calvin and Hobbes. So I also think if they'd had it, we would have checked it out. Um, but they didn't really have comics. And if we requested comics, they would do the whole comics aren't literature, etc. Their art book section was like maybe three books. They wouldn't let you check any of them out if you were under 18 because there might be nudity, but they didn't know if they had nudity. This is just, you know, my act. I was never like a talented art student. Um, my art classes tapped out in eighth grade. So I didn't necessarily have the background in art that I would have liked to have had. And even as a teenager, like I was aware of that. I knew I didn't have the same opportunities that people in other parts of the country might have had. Um, I was like, I always kind of figured that if I got to go to art school, I was going to be the one behind the curve. You know, that I was going to have to work twice as hard to be half as good. And I kind of accepted that. So I went to the University of New Orleans for my undergrad. Um, I had a full ride scholarship thanks to TOPS which Joseph can explain in the chat. Um, it's basically just to keep Louisiana kids in Louisiana for college and to kind of help uh, them pay for college. So I decided to go um, and take, I wanted to major in art. So originally when I went to UNO, I went, so I'm adding a little gold to the fish's eye and that white does help it pop, but honestly it pops a lot on its own. So I enrolled in the art department there and it started out okay. This is post-Katrina. I originally applied to UNO because um, one of the professors in the art department wanted to start an illustration major. And obviously I wanted to take illustration. And he talked a real big talk about watercolor. So 
you know, I was set for that. But Hurricane Katrina basically gutted the art department. There was no money. A lot of our resources were ruined, so that got scrapped. So I ended up majoring in what was called hypermedia, but it's just digital media, digital art, Photoshop. And I had two professors for that major, and neither of them really believed in teaching. Both of them were real big on, you can Google that. And both of them were real big on um, saying, like if you showed them a project you were working on for their class, for a grade, they would tell, both of them would tell you, oh, it's great, it's great, it's great, until critique, and then they would savage you, okay? So I had other teachers who liked my art. I had other teachers who were supportive of me. They didn't necessarily think my art was like ready yet, but they were very supportive of me and they kind of kept me going. One of the teachers I was just talking about, he was fresh out of grad school. He'd come from some school from up north. I don't know that he, he'd been in galleries, but I don't know that he'd done a lot of professional work because he was really young and he like went straight into Louisiana to teach. So, and his tact level was like none, okay? He is nice to some people, but he and I just really didn't get along. And every critique, he would basically try to talk me out of wanting to become a professional comic artist, even though I wasn't turning in comic projects to his class, and would basically try to talk me out of pursuing art for a living because I'm not a conceptual artist. I like to do commercial work. I like commercial work. I enjoy it. I really loved the work I did for Lego. I liked the work I did for Dollar Tree. I like commercial work. I like work that's meant to be seen by a lot of people and enjoyed by a lot of people. And I'm, I'm not really big on high concept. I think sometimes you can make art of something because you like the idea and you think it would be pretty, okay? He was very much concept and conceptual. So he was really, really, really just always very negative about everything I turned in. And uh, if I didn't have those other professors who were really supportive of me, even if, you know, like it was one of those situations where they would be very kind, but they would also be like, but you need to improve your art. And I could deal with that. It was just the like, anytime anybody ever just stonewalls me 100%, that's when I can't deal with it. Um, and I still 100% carry a grudge against him to this day. So, you know, it, but I learned a lot from him in that I learned that I didn't want to ever be that kind of teacher. And I didn't ever want to do to students what his kind of callous words did to me. So in that regard, I owe him a big debt of gratitude because a lot of my teaching philosophy is more teaching people through inspiration rather than teaching people through degradation and putting people down so you know some good came of it um so while I was at UNO and graduating I started to put together a portfolio because I wanted to apply to SCAD for their graduate school I wanted to go to an art school that had a comic department and that was one of the closest ones and I'd heard good things about it and I there was a guy I went to high school with who went and he had a really good time to be fair he partied and drank the entire time but you know and I don't do those things, so <laughs> we had very different experiences. That same professor, he was, because he was my, my mentor professor, he was the head of my department, I couldn't, I had to get him to write me a letter of recommendation. Now my grades were okay, like my, my grades were like A's and B's. They weren't, I, I, did, I wasn't making bad grades, but he basically wanted to refuse to write, and he told not me, but he told one of my other professors who was writing a letter of rec, because I had to get three, he told them this and they told me that he was not going to write the letter because he wanted me to stay at UNO and go to grad school there and help bring up the program, which is really frustrating because he was super negative to me the whole time. So it's like, why would you want me here? Um, but my other two mentor professors kind of strong armed him into doing it. So, and then when I was at SCAD, obviously, I have this very feminine, girly, manga-inspired style, and that, now, that's much more acceptable. But when I was at SCAD, that was seen as the kiss of death, because Tokyo Pop had just collapsed. So I, I got a lot of negative feedback regarding my art style, and also regarding the, the audience, because I wanted to make comics for, um, like, softer comics, you know? So for people who didn't necessarily like what was available, and also for like un untapped audiences. 
So like little girls and little boys who like softer things. And I was basically told that was just unmarketable. Nobody read that. Oh yeah, of course. So I'm using some of the Hydrocolor. So these are handmade watercolor, not handmade by me, but handmade by Hydrocolor. Uh, I'm using some of their metallics to add some red accents here and there. I'm basically just nitpicking while I tell you guys stories. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go in with an orange in the fish's eye. So basically my point with all of that is that there are so many artists who are very tenacious, who get told you'll never amount to anything. You don't have any ability. You don't have any this, you don't have any that. So. You know, that's one person's opinion, and maybe it's true, and maybe it's not. And now I'm just using a little bit of the Hydrocolor Blue to add in. I'm going to focus it, I think, more on the bottom side of the fish, just to add in more shadow. And then I want to try and do an all-metallic fish after this. Exactly like 7-inch care. That is 100% what 7-inch care is supposed to be. You get it. It's supposed to be just kind of relaxing. Stuff does happen, but kind of low key. A lot of really quiet moments and focusing more on interpersonal relationships and um, interpersonal conflicts, not so much on exterior uh, fighting. And I do enjoy like battle shown in manga okay we're watching jojos like i like that but i don't want to make that oh man tanner i seriously doubt you're a scar on his psyche what you said was so i mean it probably wasn't you at all. It was so innocuous and his reaction was so over the top. He probably had so much else going on. I hope he got some resolution and some peace for those exterior uh, factors. Because you asking a question about a project, that is not enough. If someone doesn't have other major stuff going on, that's not enough to like send somebody into a tailspin. So I, I doubt it was you, you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm gonna try to do an all metallic fish. So what I want to do is I wanna clean up my workspace, clean my brushes, and um, kinda start fresh. We're gonna pick a different fish. So you guys can't see what I'm doing, but you will in a moment. And I'm... I think considering I've never done this before, it, I think I went over the top adding the metallic on it. Okay, like if I left it. I like it. You want it? You want to put it up at work? Uh, maybe. Okay. So I'm currently looking for, I think that could be a good one. Because then we get to use, we get to use the black of the paper. Okay, so I am going to go clean things up. What we're gonna need for this one is I'm going to use a, a colored lead pencil. This is yellow. You could probably just use graphite. Graphite might be better, but it's gonna show up on camera so you guys can see it. But if you're doing it at home, I would recommend graphite. And we're gonna just use the metallic colors.
paper. I goof. I'm also gonna try to kind of reselect my palette based on what we're working on. See, that's my goal too, is I'm, I want to make the kind of comics that weren't there when I was young. So like, yeah. And I know that means a smaller audience and I'm cool with that. Like, that's fine. It's just sometimes I feel like I'm making comics for no one and then I get ha start having problems you know what I mean like it's okay if I'm not making comics for a lot of people um, it's because the people I'm making comics for are people who don't no one normally makes comics for or very few people in the US make comics for them so like you know to me it's a very worthwhile group of folks to make comics for um, Oh man, this fish has some really beautiful stuff going on in the tail. And I have some really nice, hopefully, colors that'll complement that. Oh yeah, and then it's got like this dark green. Oh, what a cool fish. Hey Maddie, good evening. I'm happy to see you. The black watercolor paper should be like super for you because you do a lot with gouache and this paper seems like it would like gouache. Okay, give me a sec because I'm just kind of collecting my thoughts, getting mentally organized. Did you pick the fish based on the colors you have or just you like it? I like the fish. Cause I have a pretty good color gamut. So I wasn't concerned about like, do I have these colors? What's your day job, Indy? If you don't mind me asking, obviously you don't have the answer. It's like, I know I'm missing a palette. putting away the white, but I probably will still want the white. Okay, this time I'm going to try to capture the sketching phase as well. Going way back, I guess I feel like the only person who has the right to determine your ability and validity and whether or not you're going to succeed or fail as an artist is you. That's the only person who has the right. Because there are artists who I thought were going to be super popular and succeed. Their art sure deserves it, but it never really happened for them. And then there are artists who I, I would not have guessed, but they came into their own and they're really strong artists and their art has a very unique voice that people really enjoy. So, you know, don't let other people decide your future for you. Okay, so we did a really light or sketch this time. Move that so it doesn't cast so much of a shadow. But that makes sense because the more I draw something, the more confident I get in drawing it. I 
saw that Henna Mule is making tone watercolor paper. I really want to try it. But I also don't want to pay like the million bucks that <laughs> Amazon is going to claim for it. Okay, so I think I'm going to use this. Go ahead and start. And the thing I want to do, I want to be strategic this time because last time I just kind of threw a bunch of things and some worked and some didn't and I kind of hit a vibe later on. Yeah. And some of these I want to go ahead and apply some water to them to activate them and that way we're going to get the most opaque coverage I think that's like the best advice the best idea is to just try and like lean in with what you like and what means a lot to you as an artist and what speaks to you and then hopefully you can find people who feel the same way and what do I want to start do I want to start with the head with that kind of like mystic green color so are these the pearlescent ones these so are the one that's shiny for white surface What? I thought that was uh, at least for um, Daniel Smith. There's, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. For black paper and one this for white is paper. not. No, this is just iridescent. Like just iridescent. I get what you're saying because they with the black paper they're adding an optical brightener and they're adding more mica, so it stands out more on the black paper. At least I think. I'd have to like look that back up. So what I'm trying to do this time is I'm trying to leave a lot of the black of the paper. I'm trying to trust myself a little bit more since the first one went better than I thought. And see, this is challenging for me because I am used to building up my tones, not necessarily working like adding the highlights if you guys know what I mean I'm used to working darker not lighter and then I'm going to dab in wet into wet some of this green from the hydrocolor palette Making, oh, stepped on my mic cord. Making handmade books is super satisfying. It's like taking your own fate into your hands. In a good way, like in a positive way. Because it's like, yeah, I can make, I want this to exist, so I'm going to make it. And I'm going to dab in a little bit of this lighter green. And what's going to, what I need to keep in mind is that I can always go back in like we did with the other one and layer in some of the other color we want. Okay, so we have two blues, actually we have three, but I'm gonna start with this one. I think it's a little bit lighter and I'm just using this to kind of help get the uh, pigment mixed onto the, onto the brush. Did somebody ask? about the Daniel Smith or was that you? That was me. I mean, that sounds right, but I, before I like. I, I looked at a pearlescent and iridescent are different since I was thinking about it. Yeah, pearlescent is usually like intended to provide some coverage, whereas iridescent is usually designed to be like a glazing color or a glazing additive or an additive period.
Now I'm going to switch over to this lighter blue. Mix in some of the darker blue so we get maybe like a more silvery blue, yes. Where, ooh, yeah, that is pretty. Maybe try to get some like wet into wet blending up here where like the highlights hitting it. Apologies. What are you trying? Sorry about that. Give me a second. My secondary recording device is going to do what it's going to do. It says it's too full. No. Mm, this is what you get for recording with your phone. This is my punishment for being unprofessional. Okay. All right. I got it. Hopefully I can get in there while it's still wet. All right. Then I want to add a little bit of green. What we end up with as it goes into the tail that needs a little bit of water yeah it's a really nice that's usually how I use metallic paint, especially if I'm doing like commissions. I use just a little bit of metallic, like maybe in the eyes, just to kind of make it pop. But since we did the other one where we were using the metallic as an accent, and I felt a little bit like I was chickening out, I wanted to do this one where it was more metallic. So you know I'm actually doing what I promised. Full metal beta. Full metal beta commiss. What's neat, what I'm enjoying, not necessarily claiming proficiency, but what I am enjoying is kind of studying where the shadows are and then leaving those because I don't normally get to do that a whole lot. On the Gundams, it makes a lot of sense because it makes for this. <laughs> oh well, oh well, oh well. It makes for this really pretty pop of color, or not color, but pop of like contrast is what I'm looking for. Because you have like the mat. I'm assuming you're using like a mat with that, because that's where I would go. Is I would do like matte and then pop with a metallic contrast. Okay, so this is not the right yellow, but that's okay. Actually, we can make it more so the right yellow because I have kind of like a cream. Yeah, but I'm kind of hoping because I know I over render a lot of what I do and I've been trying to work on pulling back, which is why ah, I got a little bit of yellow on there. Um, that's why I've been studying Chinese watercolor because I, I know that's like an exercise in restraint. Um, so I'm hoping this will be even more of an exercise in restraint. What I'm trying to do, and we'll see if I live to regret this, is I want to get, because see on this four fin, it's much lighter. And then it gets dark again. So 
something else I've really been enjoying about lightly studying. I'd love to take in-person classes. That is not an option yet. Um, lightly studying Chinese watercolor is how much your how important the brushwork is because brushwork in my opinion is one of the areas where I'm really lazy and I want to be better about it. I feel like a lot of my work starts to look kind of like a coloring book or coloring by numbers you know where everything is just flat filled in. I'm going to leave the black just black so that we have this like matte contrast but you should definitely experiment with adding a black like even that could be really cool like a matte fill with color like gouache and then like a metallic shadow because but the thing about metallic I feel like metallic pulls it closer to the viewer but it would be really interesting to see how that actually shakes out. And then I'm adding a little bit of green. I'm trying to maintain that like shadow on the underside, but also do some wet into wet green right there. And then we're going to go in with a little bit of the blue along the bottom of the fin. This one's been a real fun one for me because it's out, it was out of my comfort zone a little bit, but still enough that I didn't, I, that I was like, yeah, I think I can do this. Okay, so hopefully you guys didn't see that, but I'm gonna tell you about it anyway. So I had a pop-up on my screen from next door neighbor from my email, and it's somebody complaining about the, the upkeep of property because some of my neighbors have, oh boy, oh boy. I could, I could do like a whole story time on this. So I live in a neighborhood that is in general much nicer than my income level. I live in an apartment that is like the dowdy part of the neighborhood. So I have some neighbors who are very well off, but they're kind of jerks. And they are always, so it makes watching next door neighbor sometimes very entertaining because they sure speak their minds a lot and maybe some of them shouldn't. And uh, they always have opinions about what other people should be doing with their personal property. And also, I have been reported on there a couple of times as a crazy woman because I was on the phone with my mom and I had my headphones in and they thought I was talking to myself. So, you know, it just makes for, it was very entertaining to see a description of myself completely different from how I envisioned myself uh, up on next door neighbor. But some of these neighbors do not ever, ever do their own yard care. They always pay someone else to do it. And some, I mean, we're under like no non-essential businesses orders right now, but uh, I guess lawn care is an essential business because several are still operating, but I guess some people can't get their normal landscapers to come out. So it's just been interesting in my opinion, to see the claws kind of come out over this instead of like everybody just being chill and minding their own business. It really is lovely to watch that. And um, I've been watching a lot of uh, all Chinese YouTube channels where they do that but I wish and I also have some have some books on it but I wish uh, I wish I could find someone who could do a really good job explaining the basic brush strokes because I didn't I didn't grow up with that so I don't I don't know those things <laughs> I 
that's one of the reasons I want to take in-person Chinese watercolor classes is because this is something I know I can't just teach myself because I'm trying and I'm not succeeding. They're also nice, the brushes are also nice because they're very affordable for larger brushes. Let me see, I have a few right here. I'll pause my other video for a sec, or I'll just, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, for larger brushes, they're really economical and they handle pretty well. They take a little bit of getting used to, shedding hairs, they take a little bit of getting used to, but um, I'm really happy I bought them and I do use them uh, with my other watercolor as well. And this is one of my favorites. It's a hockey brush and I like it because I can do washes and I can stretch my watercolor paper really easily and evenly with this thing. So I really like it. And it was like four bucks. So while I kind of wait for some of this to dry, I'm going to just kind of get caught up with the chat because it's hard for me to parse both sometimes. Tanner, they are, they, okay. Most of them don't talk to us. Joseph will say hi and some of them will just like look at him, which drives me crazy because like where we're originally from, if you say hi to somebody, they'll say hi back. So it's weird that they don't say hi but some of them have been really nice but then when it's like election season they all got to put their signs up and uh some of them we share similar viewpoints and some of them are very 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 different like my no no tax for tracks neighbors across the way who have a nurse come in three times a week to help them no shame on that but it's like she's having to drive herself Public trans, better public transportation would be so useful for her. But since they don't drive, I guess it doesn't occur to them that the people who are helping them could benefit from that. And I get that, yeah. With the Mr. Super Clear fumes, I have heard those are pretty fumey. And it's really cool that you do doll customization. I have so I think those are awesome. I follow so many people on YouTube and on Instagram who do that. It's amazing what you can do with like a base just from the store and turn it into this gorgeous custom doll. And it's something I've always wanted to do, but I don't think I could do it. Um, it's very expensive to do it well. It does require a lot of experience and skill that I don't necessarily have. So big thumbs up. That's so cool. Oh yeah. I wonder if Mr. Super Clear. So I'm very familiar with like Krylon spray matte and I know Mr. Super Clear um, has a matte finish and then they may have a shiny finish. I think they have a shiny finish one too. But I wonder if it's like Krylon where if it's cold out with Krylon, it'll just like not actually stick to what you just sprayed it on. <laughs> sort of like slough off. It's like a great thing to find out when you were trying to get some more tooth on a color pencil drawing. Well, that's like the people who, so there's a, there, there are a, few schools there's like three schools in this area and uh two are public and one that i'm thinking of no wait okay yeah no there's four schools apologies three are public one of them is a special needs school it's public and then one is like a private catholic school for younger kids and um it's just real interesting to see how nasty some folks are about not wanting to help support public school, which I'm like a big proponent of supporting pu public schools. Okay, let's do this tail. I'm excited about this tail. There is a lot going on, so I'm going to have to take it kind of slow. The metallic on the black paper is such a good opportunity for like 
focusing on the brushwork because we can use that to generate shadows. I mean, I need to work on my brush work, okay? Like, I am aware. <laughs> oh, and then, okay. It gets even like more blue-green down there. So what I want to do is I want to go in with some of the blue while I have it. Because I want that kind of diffused blend. Like, I don't have a problem with people who send their kids to, to private schools. That Don't get me wrong. I don't have a problem with homeschooling either. A lot of my students fall into both of those categories. I just, I just, I don't know, it breaks my heart when people are really dismissive of public school, especially good public school, because there are some good public schools. And what that can bring into somebody's life. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, even if, even if your kid doesn't go to public school, ma the majority of people your kid is going to interact with as an adult will have gone to a public school. So yeah, you would want as many kids as possible to have access to a quality education because it does, it does result in a better future for everybody. Yeah, but a lot of that is because of the lack of funding. I understand why a lot of people are choosing to send their kids to private schools post a, after a certain age. You know, like that's not what I'm I'm dumping on. But I also know if you cut your funding to the higher level public schools, then of course the education is going to start to suffer there because they don't have the resources they need. The teachers aren't getting paid enough. Some of them are having to work multiple jobs, which I think is just always setting those teachers up for a bad situation. Because, like, how can you give your best to your quote-unquote full-time job if in order to earn a living and be solvent, you have to turn around and go work another eight hours at another job, you know? That's true, yeah. Like, right now, a lot of kids, that's where they were getting, like, two of their meals, sometimes three of their meals for the day. I say three, but some of those schools would provide snacks as part of their after-school programming. Oh, I imagine sculpting and painting something that tiny would be so difficult as doll heads. My fine motor skills are not as good as I would like them to be. So I have a lot of admiration for folks who can do that. Interesting, interesting. I'm gonna let it dry and kind of think about what it looks like it needs. Move it around a little bit for people too. They say they like. They like. Well, I will once it's had a chance. See, this is all wet and a little bit pooled. Oh, okay. I want it to kind of get a chance to soak in, and then I'll use the hair dryer, and then I'll move it for you guys so you can see the sparkle. Yeah, no, I appreciate, I appreciate the, in, the feedback, the input, the in back. My brain likes to combine words sometimes. And then that's fun because people think I'm making fun of them and I'm not, I'm not. Okay, so on some of these I want to, ah, I need more color on there. One of the reasons I like teaching 
through the library system is the library pays for my time. So that means parents from any income bracket can bring their kids and their kids can get art lessons. And I really appreciate that kind of accessibility because art, in my opinion, shouldn't be about your kid having access to art, you being able to learn art skills. It shouldn't be only for people who have excess money. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be a luxury. That's what I was trying to say. I don't get the tingles. I get, it makes me very, very relaxed, but only certain ones, um, only certain types. So like um, an ASMR video where they're drawing you and the person clearly knows what they're doing, so relaxing. But if the person doesn't know, it, like if they're using art terms, but they're using them all wrong and the order of operations is all wrong, my brain can't get past that. I do have DS Amethyst. That's a gorgeous color. That would look really nice on this paper because it's, yeah, you're right. It's like a subtle shimmer. And some of their um, duotone colors would look so good on this. Okay, so I'm using some of that mystic black and I'm using just the side of my brush just to brush in a little bit of that like black green color. Because at the bottom of the fins, we get a little bit of that, um, you can see how it's kind of shaded into green and it's a little bit darker. So I wanna try and capture some of that without you know, overworking this like I will probably do. I like it though. I'm glad I tried it both ways. Oh, thank you. Was that the zine workshop one? That was at the, um, the Gallatin Pike. In terms of learning how to make zines, I do have a better version of that tutorial that isn't like with a class. But believe it or not, sometimes when I'm pitching classes, I have to show them uh, examples of my teaching work. So it's nice to have those on my channel sometimes. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I get it. Like it, it starts to become kind of uh, meditative, like working on like a lathe. At some point, I'm always signing Joseph up for things he doesn't necessarily want to do. Um, at some point, I want us to take a pottery class together. Fun. Yeah, I think so. I would like to do the kind of... I oh no, I'd be terrible at it, which is also why I want to do it with you, because we'd be bad at it together. Yep. And then it wouldn't be about... I think you'd be good though, because you're a meticulous person with an eye for detail and you have good fine motor control. And I feel like that is useful. Like I've, I've watched a lot of pottery shows, so this makes me a pottery expert. Exactly. Another white fish in metallic white. So I like your idea. The problem with that is I'm going to see if I can cycle through the reference images I found for today. Um, bah, 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 bah. It'll take me a little bit, but I'm waiting for this to dry, so that's okay. So let me show you the white reference we have first. So we have the one we already did. And what I'm looking for for this, I think works best, is a lot of black and a lot of shadow because then you get that contrast. And this fish is gorgeous, but and it did work better on black paper than it would have on white paper but it's not, there's not enough contrast. Now we do have this, hang on. Oh, he's so tiny. Uh, let me, okay. We do have this one, which might work really well because we have this nice transition to a darker shade. And then we have all this white up here. So we have that contrast going on. So that could be a good one to do. Um, ba bum bum this one could also be a good one because we have you guys can't see my mouse I don't know why I'm gesturing with my mouse um, we have on the like the inside of the back fin 
we have this darker area so we can get that really nice contrast and that nice form. Um, and when I was looking for these, I was looking for good contrast. So that's the white fish. And then we also have this guy who is beautiful, but I have not done this enough to be confident at taking something and then adding more shadows. Um, if it was flowers, I'm more confident with that because I do a lot of flowers, but with the fish, not yet. Um, another reason I don't, I'm open to doing it as a, as a time-lapse video at a later time, but it's 10 o'clock, so, so I'm going to turn into a pumpkin. Also, Nook's Cranny has closed, so I can't sell things now. And I don't, I don't time travel. Ah, no, I goofed. A big goofed. What am I doing? Why are you not? Thank you. Y'all are going to see a whole lot of ugly goofatroning. And I need to pop the reference for this in the description. So I will put that in the... Wow, okay. It's a nice site. Um, I will, there we go. I'll put that in the chat and then I'll add that to the description. Okay, fair. Yeah, I, I am down with doing it. Um, cause this is actually very fun and it's very relaxing, but I'll turn into a pumpkin and I don't want to turn into a pumpkin. A paint of metal pumpkin. Okay, so looking at our beautiful reference fish, I don't really want to do a whole lot to it. Is it? It's mostly dry. Okay. I hope y'all are seeing the good spark. It sparkles a lot. This is a Mardi Gras fish. I like it. Which one do you like better, Joseph? The white fish or this one? So since it's had a chance to dry, something else I want to do is I'm going to go in and just add like a very few details, not a lot, which I know that's, it can't be me talking, right? It's got to be like invasion of the body snatchers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so you see on the inside, of, I'm just turning my way. You see on the inside of the eye, my head's going to get in the shot. But y'all will forgive me because you love me. Uh, is there enough water to, sh to make it move? Yeah. And then I can just, while it's still wet, I can just dab in a little extra paint just to add more instead of having to go over the whole thing again. Just to let the capillary action of the paper take our paint where we want it to go. And then on the green, there's like a few little flecks of gold. And was or is way in the shot? Oh, I mean, I knew it was going to get way in the shot for one of those because my eyesight is amazing. So good. So I'm just kind of going in and like adding few gold details here and there. But I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out tonight, making it awesome and keeping the chat moving because that helps so much because I've run out of things to say. <laughs> And I hope this gave you guys some ideas. If it did, if like, you don't have to paint this, you can do whatever. Okay. Like I'm not saying like, it has to be this, but if you do make something that this video inspired, 
I want to see it. Like tag me or um, send it to me on Discord. Joseph will drop a link to the paint box. If you're not on there yet, you're totally welcome to. It's an art Discord. I haven't. I keep trying. Yes, it's a sideways Daruma, which is representing my life. <laughs> sure, sure, we'll roll with that. Now, I like Daruma because they kind of represent um, no matter how many times you get knocked down, you always get back up again. So I do need to fix that Daruma because he's not currently representing what I want him to represent. He's not on brand enough. This really is a beautiful fish, though. I meant, I mean, the reference. Like, I'm happy with how mine's turning out, but I'm not, I'm not, yeah, you know what? We'll embrace it. I like how this fish turned out. I'm proud of it. Um, it doesn't look like he has a chat up. Uh, Electro says we should name the fish Timmy after the nickling we can't sell to. Oh! <laughs> uh, I said Bold Leaf would have looked good in this painting. Timmy it is. And PJ Andrews said of the two fishes, which is your favorite? Me? I like this one because this one, there's some stuff that's really good about it. There's also some stuff that doesn't work. This was my training wheels fish. So for never having done it before, I'm very proud of it. But I like this one because... Timmy. I like Timmy. So the other one's Tommy. I like this one because I was able to take what I'd learned and make the changes that I regretted not doing in the first one. So, okay, my phone is saying no memories, Becca. No room for use. So that'll just have to be okay by me. But which one's y'all's favorite? Do you prefer Tommy, the more opaque fish, or Timmy, the more metallic fish? Man, it's like his tail has streamers in it. It's so pretty. And then, you can't really see it on this, obviously, but in the actual reference, he has like this black edge around his tail. That's just a gorgeous fish. That's a show fish. I'd take him out for dinner. Might end up on the plate, but you know. Timmy's a good fish. Okay. I need to stop nitpicking on it. Because we're going to take something that works because there's an unfinished quality about it that really works in its favor. And we're going to work it to death. I'm queen of that. That's like, I feel like my art is both, could be so much better if I just spent an extra few hours on it, probably in the sketch stage, and then mm, loses a lot of its vibrancy because I overwork it. So we're going to call it. I'm done. I had a 
blast painting this with you guys this evening. I really appreciate your patience too. Nobody, nobody, I'm so proud of y'all. Thank you so much for being awesome. Nobody was like, hey Becca, that's not metallic. You said metallic. So thank you guys so much for being patient because I know I promised metallic and we did do metallic. It just took a while to get there, but that's okay because that's art. Often it takes a while to kind of get where we're going and kind of pushing through and trying new things and taking that time to like, learn how to do it and learn what we like and what we don't like is really important to actually getting to something that we're like, yeah, I'm happy with how this turned out. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and helping me reach that point. We did it together. It really felt like a journey for me. And I hope you guys will share some of your art in the paint box. I definitely invite y'all to do it. Uh, B and Jill and Calvin and Feather are already doing that, so take take their cue and come join us. Joseph, like I said, will drop a link. Oh, and Tanner and Allie, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to forget you guys. I had to like do mental math. Who's in the chat tonight? So that's on me, my bad, y'all. But I always love seeing you guys' art. Sometimes it takes a little while for me to respond, but y'all get that, that's just life. That's not any kind of statement of anything. So, oh, and Tally shares art too sometimes. See, my brain is slowly clicking. Um, anyway, it is 10, 11, Saturday night. Chat. Huh? Should probably bring up the chat. I should bring up the chat, Joseph says. Should go through and see what people are saying. Maddie says, I only have the Gansai Tommy paints. I'm waiting for the pearlescent watercolors from tin from AliExpress, but maybe I'll cheat with gouache. That's not cheating gouache on this, especially if you leave those shadows, that would look really good. Brazilian fish, is it because of the colors? It's a beautiful fish either way. More contrast to Tommy. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because we've got, exactly, we've got this white. And if I hadn't added all the metallic, we would also have that really nice, like, matte opaque going on. Whereas I feel like all the metallic that I added kind of detracted. What would have looked nice would have been the matte paint, then the gold eye, and then maybe a little bit of iridescence on the body. If metallic black would be good in shadow, you know what? I have, remember, remember the, the piece of paper I goofed at the beginning? I got it. We can use it, we can find out. Give me a sec, I wanna put this somewhere where it can dry. And I know I have, okay, so, gotta find it. I don't think the, sorry, I'm looking. Oh, I know where it is, okay. I don't think the Fine Tech has, see this is the black. And it's not, there's no real sh shimmer. There's no real shine. So what one could do, we have a few different options, I think, to make it more, more shimmery. Cause I assume for a metallic black, see what would be nice. I don't know how feasible would be like obsidian. So you get like that coarse, kind of like the, the way granite kind of shimmers but that that's good it's obsidian it's going to tear up the paper okay so we took some gray and we mixed it in so that's our first test then i'll go in with like just the black as it is because i don't think there's any real shimmer in the black and then we'll try We'll try it with white and we'll try it with that mystic color. Oh well, the white doesn't want to budge, so we'll do it. We'll use it from here. And see now we have a great justification for all those fine tech and hydrocolor sets we bought that we didn't really use all that much of other than for accent colors and to paint Pokemon sometimes. So that was black with the white. 
and then this is the mystic color with black so I think a black with any additive color would probably be the best let me show you the mystic color so it goes down almost translucent there's a hint of red there's a hint of green those are some nice colors for a flag because they're so high contrast they really catch the attention yeah this is the one i would i would recommend the 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 mystic shimmering color with the black as a black accent of course you know we're not going to know how it really looks until it's dry because the water kind of catches the light and changes how we perceive that color oh man i'm gonna have so much fun picking up tonight <laughs> such fun much fun and also I appreciate you guys enduring me chewing gum I know it's like kind of a gross sound it honestly does help with the the stress from talking from for two hours so it helps me do a better job and I appreciate y'all not being like ew that's gross or worse being like oh I love it when you chew gum I've gotten some weird not from any of y'all yeah, that'd be like, nope, camera off. Y'all have always been awesome, but I have gotten some people that I was just kind of like, block. Exercise that block button. That's because we were so fast on the Bananation. I try to run an all-ages friendly stream here, even though we do run a little bit later at night. I know some folks... Their kids might still, I mean, it's eight. Like, realistically, a lot of people are still, a lot of kids are still up. So I try to keep it, you know, pretty, pretty tame. Also want to point out that I did change my channel over from being four kids. The whole reason I had originally marked it as that is not because I feel like I believe this channel really is for kids, but because a lot of my art is cartoon art. And a lot of the YouTube lawyers, to be fair, a lot of what I'd heard and read about how this was going to be enforced. And also like what the FTC said and what YouTube said was if you have cartoon art, it's going to be considered as for kids. And it's just kind of like, I mean, whether you like Ralph Bakshi or not, he fought real hard to take cartoon out of the realm of just for kids. And I also just couldn't, can't justify hiring a lawyer to defend every video on my channel either, you know. But I got so tired of what I couldn't do and what we weren't allowed to do. Like we couldn't have comments and we couldn't have live stream with the chat on. And you couldn't search my channel, which I really hated that. And you couldn't, what is it? So you can watch videos minimized in the sidebar while you look at other things on YouTube. That was taken away. And on mobile, you couldn't have it playing in the background anymore. And it was just like all these extra limitations that YouTube tacked on that they didn't disclose originally. And uh, I'm one of those people who's actually very grateful to YouTube for offering a video and streaming hosting service. If I were trying to do this on my own website, it would be crazy cost prohibitive. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, so I don't want this to sound like she gets free hosting from YouTube and she's going to complain about it. Cause that's, that's not really what I'm trying to do. I'm just saying like, I tried to make the best decision I could and things changed. So I changed it back. Okay. So I, yeah, now that I look at it, the mystic color is stronger than I thought. So if you're looking for like what would read as a true black, straight black actually has more shimmer than I gave it credit for. Now that it's dry, it does have some shimmer. So that would be a good choice or the, the gray and the black would be a good choice. All right, guys, I think that is all I have in me for this evening. Y'all were awesome. I had a lot of fun. And I hope, let's see, what is next week? Next week is, next Saturday is the 2nd. Okay, I will, whoa, no, okay. 
there's a very good chance that I will not have a stream this upcoming Saturday. My mom is having surgery and um, we're deciding whether or not we want to make the eight hour drive there. Well, eight hour there and eight hour back. So there probably will not be a stream on Saturday, but there may be a stream on the eighth. So I'll let you guys know. Um, obviously I'll share it to the community tab and I'll share it on the discord server. So bye guys. Thank you guys. Have a good evening. Get some sleep. Stay healthy. As healthy as you possibly can.